Mm -hmm. Right, so the, um, the more observant among you um, will realise, and, and Joe obviously has, has already raised the fact that uh, we don't see Gary Woodall on screen. And uh, this morning I got a call from Amanda um, and she then called Esther as well because Gary had rung her, having found her, fortunately had Amanda's number because she was on the website because she's the treasurer. So, um, because he is actually in A and E, he has hurt his foot, and he's waiting uh, for to be seen. And uh, hopefully, we, we are really hoping that obviously it's it's a, a sort of a minor injury then, really. But um, I I do think that uh, you know a bit remiss of him because he can actually join Zoom from anywhere. So you know. He could have just turned his phone on and, and, and joined us anyway, but uh, there you go. So, see. yeah. Anyway, so this morning, what we're going to do, we're going to carry on with the service. He had obviously worked out the structure of the service. Um, there's one song we uh, won't be singing because it's on um, the, the different software. Um, so it's, it's Jesus Be The Centre. But we've still got three songs. Um, we'll carry on. We'll be carrying on the reading. What we're going to ask you to do, Bill, is to actually, uh, Esther will um, take over this bit when, when we get to it, but we'll ask you to do the reading when you're going to do the reading. But we're going to ask you mm -hmm. to do it a second time as well, because we want to do something a bit different in the service. Well, the same, same, the same one It'll twice. be the same reading twice, yes. <laughs> Esther will explain, Esther will explain to you what we, we want um, done at that point. Um, so, uh, yeah, so we're just going to carry on with the service. What we don't have is Gary uh, uh, giving us his talk. But what we're hoping is that we'll be able to listen to God during the service and um, that we will have um, an equally uh, spiritual experience and we will get a lot out of it. And I just want to, before I hand over to Adrian to do the welcome, I just want to read... Um, a verse from Proverbs, uh, chapter 3, verses 5 to 6. And this is what we had to do this morning. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. So with that, I'd like to hand over to Adrian for the welcome. And um, everybody's muted, are they? Um, just need to get everyone muted. I'll mute everyone before the first song. I don't want to mute. Oh, okay, right, okay, that's fine. Hello and good morning and uh, welcome and thoughts and prayers then for Gary, who obviously would have been with us uh, at this unfortunate um, instant he's had then. Um, so in thinking about the welcome this morning, I, I was um, discussing about thinking of uh, a verse or some scripture that might get me started um, to be able to prepare a welcome and at the same time as I was doing that I was preparing some uh, words to go on our website um, to show that we had uh, joined the welcome directory um, and were going to be open to trying to support um, people leaving prison. So again along, along with doing that I, I began to see if I could get some guidance for a line of scripture just to put at the top of the page. And I was directed to um, Hebrews 13. And um, so I'll take a, a couple of lines from there as the, the basis for um, this short welcome. So Hebrews 13. Do not forget to show hospitality to strangers. For by doing so, some people have shown hospitality to angels without knowing it. And continue to remember those in prison, as if you were there with them. So out of that for me came these um, thoughts about welcome in a broader sense and hospitality and uh, how important that is going to be, and probably has always been, but it's going to be particularly to us in the future as we come back together as a church and reconnect with people that we haven't seen on Zoom, that there are likely to be opportunities as more people um, cross our boundary and come in and find out uh, what is happening in our church and also um, the likelihood that we may encounter one or two individuals who have um, left prison. So welcome will be important. 
and it's very much the twin action of welcome and hospitality. Um, so we need, I think, probably to build on the strength that we've always had, the strength at the door, welcome at the door, and the welcome in the pews, and probably just think more consciously how we um, uh, make that, that welcome live um, beyond just the, the Sunday interaction. Equally, uh, um, in providing hospitality, whether it be in the coffee bar or, or over a shared meal or whatever, um, we may not encounter angels, but we may, may well encounter people that bring us angelic qualities, that deep connection to God, that zeal and enthusiasm, and that ability to recognize and support other people's gifts and strengths, and to be non-judgmental and non-discriminatory. And of course, in the way of angels, to occasionally work wonders. So the right welcome, I think, can help people turn towards finding faith, or it can strengthen faith that is already present. And it will help us, I'm sure, reconnect as a church. So I was then asked to, um, as part of this uh, welcome, to um, select a, a song for us to sing. So I selected a hymn, um, quite a venerable hymn, I think, probably, called um, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven. And although there are, to be fair, references to angels in that hymn, I chose it really because um, I went to a Church of England junior school, not coming from a Christian family, uh, but by happenstance arriving at that school. And during the last year of the school, every Wednesday, we were taken to the parish church to have a um, service for our class. And that was a very um, well-organized and very welcoming for children's service. So in a way, I think that's probably where I started off on my rather erratic journey towards faith. So um, praise my soul, the King of heaven.
as I said, we're not going to be singing um, Jesus Be the Centre. So we will uh, now be led in our prayers by Karen. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for another day to wake up and give you praise. Thank you for all our blessings and for loving us and forgiving us because you are our God. We are grateful for all the ways you have protected us and provided for us. You uplift us with your spirit and your joy. I pray that we will recognise every opportunity to walk in your light and to keep changing our lives for you. I thank you for all the different ways you renew our faith and that you never give up on us. Daily you show us that we are loved and here for a reason and that our lives are held in the unceasing tenderness that you show us. You love us when we don't deserve it and your compassion follows us everywhere. Help us to retain your love as the defining characteristic of our lives. May we live this day and every day conscious of all that has been given to us. And thank you that you recognise and rejoice in our joys and comfort us in our sorrows. Tenderly, you are a companion in our loneliness. May we be able to recognise your love when we need it the most and share it readily with a grateful heart. You have placed some incredible people in our lives and we give you thanks for them all. Some of them have passed into your care and some remain to encourage us and walk in fellowship with us. Please inspire our hearts to find creative ways of blessing our friends and affirming your love with them. I pray for your peace to rest in troubled hearts and your strength that will restore hope. In a clamouring and noisy world, Lord, we thank you for this gathering and opportunity to meet and that your world remains upon us and with us. Amen. Um, so I, you will have uh, had the email from uh, about Gary Woodall wanting somebody to share their uh, their testimony this morning, and uh, Karen very um, uh, very generously offered to to be the one to to share her testimony. So um, thank you for those prayers, Karen. Mm -hmm. And but, and now could we hear uh, from you again? So um, it was it was really interesting um, what Adrian was saying about his junior school and how he sort of had a very small start there, a similar start to myself, really. Um, it's really hard to talk about, isn't it, your faith? And I don't know why, um, for me, anyway. Uh, so I had a big think about it. Uh, I, I boiled it down to two reasons. Um, I think it's hard to explain the unexplainable, really. That is quite a big crux of it for me. How do you talk about something that you don't quite and so it's like saying how do you know blue is blue well you don't know do you but you just know that blue is blue but that's not really a good enough answer if somebody wants to talk about your face you don't just say well it just is so if you can get over the hurdle of that first conversation and get down to the nitty-gritty of it it is a really interesting collection of experiences and, and it would be really nice if we all heard each other's um mine i would say uh is, is i think adrian used the word stuttering that's quite a good word i quite like that i do own my face now but for a long time it was sort of given to me so uh that's another point i'd like to raise um i was born in bristol born mostly worked and lived in Bristol, had brief periods away, but born in Bristol to a happy but un 
faith filled family an unfaith fueled family that there, there, there wasn't faith in my family um, apart from a very interesting lady who I would like to introduce to you my very dearest and cherished great aunt now my great aunt was my mother's sisters my uh hang on I'm not going this right she's a, she's a great aunt basically she was a grandma my mum lost her mum at a very young age and so her sister stepped in and basically became grandma but we never called her grandma because she was most definitely aunt um, a maiden aunt she was uh, unmarried she dedicated absolutely dedicated her life to midwifery and she really was the original called the midwife and we had many 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 happy young days playing with all sorts of things that we shouldn't have been playing with temperatures thermometers all sorts of midwifery equipment and one of my most cherished possessions is this which is a register of cases from the central midwife board from starting at oh golly where's the date gone 44 38 1937 names addresses pronouncements very interesting lots and lots of love came from that lady she was very proud of her calling um she she was quite recognized she met princes and people and was honored so she was honored professionally and she was held in very great and dear esteem in our family so um her attitude to faith um profoundly affected me when we went to aunties that that was the house that was filled with god it didn't really occur to me at a young age that we didn't carry that back home to our own home we we, we visited and when you visit there that's how it is there so that was fine i grew up I joined the uniformed organizations, guides, brownies, all the rest of it, went to many, many church services, many Sunday services. I suppose those services, a bit like Adrian, they wash over you. Eventually you hear those words. Again, you forget them. You grow up, you study, you leave home, you marry, you become a mother, and suddenly you think, wow. So what am I doing? Where am I going? And I just found my faith returned to me so strongly but then i owned it being and experiencing what she had been talking about all her life being a mother being a special person to somebody i suddenly understood what it meant to be a special person to god and i just was overflowing and since then i've met so many people who i who i can share some parts of my story with not all but the the baby groups and I and I will mention Myra lovely lovely Myra um, and Cecil um, setting up endlessly chatterbox afternoons play groups preschools those places really help young mums keep their faith stir their faith attach their faith and what Esther's doing with messy church I'm sure is having the same effect so that is my faith story. It's not finished. Um, it's difficult living in uh, sort of really still my home without sharing a faith. It isn't really something my in-laws have. You know, doesn't have a faith with me, but it's there. And it's like one of those candles. It just doesn't blow out. You it, and it pumps her back up again. So that is my faith story. And I think I've talked enough. That's it. Thank you, Clara. Loads of this as well. Oh, <laughs> loads of I mean, I just went. I went through my memory box. It was a lovely. Oh, I know. Oh. Just cherished, absolutely cherished. So. Oh, she sounds a wonderful yeah. person, Karen. Mm -hmm. your yeah. yeah, yeah. Thank you very much for welcome sharing that with us. Mm. Um, and uh, so now we're going to sing again, and then oh, no, wait a minute. Uh, 
yeah uh, so now we're going to sing again and um after that esther will take over oh no bill it's bill's reading and then esther will will take over the the uh cool. the next bit okay thank you then so we're going to sing <laughs> In the name of the Son, in the name of the Spirit, Lord, we come. We are gathered together to lift up your name, to call on our Savior, to fall on your grace. Hear the joyful sound of our offering as your saints bow down, as your people sing. The reading is taken from Colossians chapter 1 and verses 15 to 20. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, 
things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, all things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body of the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. Thank you ever so much, Bill, for reading for us. As I say, I will, I will be calling you on you again in a moment, Bill, if that's okay. <laughs> um, what, I would re what I think what we, we would like to do is to revisit that passage again. But this time to listen to that passage. If, I don't know if any of you have Bibles to hand, to have that Bible out in front of you, to have that the, the actual text in front of you Colossians 1 15 to 20 and perhaps as Bill reads it again what phrases jump out to you it might even just be a word Let, you know where does God want to speak to each of us out of that passage and then perhaps we'll give we'll have a minute or so after Bill's read the passage again, just to sit and look at that passage, think about that passage, see what comes to mind. And then we will take, take an opportunity to, to perhaps just to share together. There's no right or wrong answer. That's the brilliant thing. There is no right or wrong answer. Just to say, this is what's, what I've seen. This is what I've got thinking about, you know? So that's what we're going to do. And then, um, I'm going to take us back into a time of prayer, actually. Um, but first things first, <laughs> let's let's go back to our back to our reading, if we could, please. Thank you ever so much, Bill. If you wouldn't mind reading again. Right. So it's Colossians chapter one, and verses fifteen to twenty. If you happen to have the Church Bible, it's it's page one hundred and ninety-seven. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible. Whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, all things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. <clears throat> he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he may, might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. Thank you, Bill. So let's take, just take a few moments just to sit and think, reflect, have a, have a look, and then we'll perhaps share together. Thank you.
wonder if I could draw us together. What's what jumped out for you? What jumped out for you? Um, please feel free to just take yourself off mute. Um, I'll get the ball rolling if that helps. If that helps. The phrase that has jumped out for me is, and he is the head of the body, the church. And I just felt it just was, I mean, probably this is why Gary may have chosen it. Obviously, we won't know because he's not here to, to speak on it. But when, with, our, with our sabbatical theme of being Jesus for the centre, it just seemed to jump out that it, that is a word for us right now. So he is the head of body, the church. That was what spoke to me. I don't know about the rest. If anybody else would be willing to share. For me, it was the verse before, actually. <clears throat> he is, uh, well, in, in my version, anyway, he is before all things, but this is the bit, and in him, all things hold together. And I thought, that is Jesus at the centre. That's what really, it, it, it spoke to me the first time when Bill read it, and, and then again the second time, that that was what I was focused on. Brilliant, brilliant. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. I'd like to say that, uh, strangely enough, Esther, that verse 18 spoke to me also. He is the head of the body, the church, and we, his people, are the body. And it just uh, has, uh, as we've been thinking about it, and obviously coming near to the end of the sabbatical, I have to say that it's been an incredible lesson and inspiring, inspiring time that Jesus really has been at the centre. Of course, we know he would be and always is. But in a very special way, he has guided every step of the body of Christ over the months, over the weeks, through different people at different times. He has revealed himself. And it's been a mighty blessing. He's the head of the body, the church. And so the church is a group of people. That's the focus that's been speaking to me. And I'm mightily, we have been blessed over these one more week to go next week. But uh, he's done a wonderful thing. And he will continue, I'm quite sure. But uh, it was a very different experience that we've gone through, the body of Christ. But he's been with us every step of the way. And that's what he's been saying to me. I'm okay. so grateful. That's great, thank you. Through many different people, may I say, within this room, and those who are not here today. Brilliant. Would anybody else be willing to share? It, you might not necessarily have much to say on why it's jumped out, but you are just aware that that's what's jumped out to you, that you have to... Have a... um, Esther, um, the word all spoke to me. I think in this short passage, the word all features about six or seven times. All creation, all things. Um, that all things were created by him and for him. It's a total passage which shows how totally Jesus is in control of everything, I think. And um, it's a very powerful passage, even though it's a short one, the things that it uh, tells us. I think that was the word that spoke to me. That's wonderful, thank you, Myra. Thank you. Thank you. As you were speaking then, Myra, it was it was occurring to me that how appropriate this passage is as we go back to, to, to you know, having Sarah with us and hopefully go back to the church and about the um, the work that we've been doing on the um, on the building. And I think it's to remember that that he is in control. It's not about us. 
It's about God and furthering mm -hmm. God's kingdom and he's in control. And I think that's what we have to hold on to as well. Yeah. Great, Chris. Amen. I, 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 would, I would agree. And I read it in, in the message rather than the, the um, one that Bill read out. And mm -hmm. the one that spoke to me is so spacious. I think this would be 19 that it's changed. So spacious is he, so expansive, that everything of God finds its proper place in him without crowding. Not only that, but the broken and dislocated pieces of the universe, people, things, animals, atoms, are properly fixed and fit together in vibrant harmony. Yeah. So there's, there's space in God. There's space and there's no crowding. And there's room. Yeah. Right there. There's space in God. I think it's actually sometimes really helpful to read the passages in different versions mm -hmm. um, phrases words can, can can jump out in different ways you know it's it's really helpful so thank you Karen thank you Pam, Pam's got a thought yeah yes lovely go for Pam uh, not too much on the passage but as I was finding the reference the uh, pages in the back of the book version of the bible that I was uh, referring to as a Bible guide and it tells us that the church in uh, Colossia was founded by Epaphras, one of Paul's concert, converts. The contents of the letter, and it states, the contents of the letter makes it clear a uh, wrong teaching was creeping through the church. In the face of this, Paul stresses the true gospel. Jesus is absolutely central he existed before anything was created, and he is the one who brings God and human grace together again. Hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Pam. Anybody, anybody else like to share anything? Yeah, Esther, I'm, I'm sorry, I sort of read on slightly. I hope that's allowed. Oh, <laughs> um, <you>? Yes. <laughs> and what really sprung out to me was verse 22. By means of the physical death of his son, God has made you his friends in order to bring you holy, pure and faultless into his presence. I think that's just an amazing verse that we can be God's friends and because of what Christ did, we can be pure and holy. Um, so it's not just that Christ is at the centre, but actually how he transforms us as his church and his body, which is just quite incredible. Thank you, Jenny. What, what version is that, Jenny? That's the good news. Good news, Bible. Yeah. <clears throat> and actually none of that, we could, there's absolutely nothing that we could have done to enable that, is it? It's purely through Jesus, I think you're happy, yeah, cool. that's wonderful, thank you. Okay, if, unless anybody else has anything that they'd like to share, I'll just sort of highlight to what I've, what I've picked up, because I've written it down, because otherwise I will go, <laughs> go. So we picked up on um, the head of the body, in him all things hold together we've picked up on the word all but the repetitive use of the word all how totally jesus is in control we've picked up on the idea of space in, in god there is no crowding i've also got here about the gospel the true gospel jesus is the center he is the central part of that gospel and i've got here we are god's friends through jesus's act of, of sacrifice there is masses of stuff in there <laughs> mm -hmm. there is so much in there and yet in the middle of it all is Jesus. Jesus holds all those thoughts together. All those thoughts together. Um, 
Now, we're going to do something now. I don't know. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to spend the time in prayer, but we're not actually going to do a lot of talking now. We're actually just going to sit and we're going to spend five or ten minutes. And I would encourage us to listen. Uh, and, it, and it will mean that we'll be sitting together here online and it will be so quiet. <laughs> and it might feel a little bit uncomfortable, but do you know what? That's going to be good. That's going to be good. And we can just take some time just to listen to God. You might hear something from him. You might not. But if, if you want to give him some space, We've got lots of lots of stuff going on for us as a church. We're at the end of the sabbatical. We're going back, potentially going back into our church building soon. Sarah's due to re be returning shortly. We are engaging in a process where we're trying to find a way forward with regards to our buildings, our spatial perceptions. We're trying to explore what it means to have Jesus as our centre. And Perhaps this morning, with Gary not here to do his sermon, it's opened up some space for us just to listen, you know, and say, you know, please just speak to us, Lord. Show us, show us perhaps what you might want to be saying, um, what you want to show us. Um, I would also say, if at the end of our five, ten minutes, somebody said, I don't know, I've got a little thought that keeps going around in my head. Keeps going, I don't know if that doesn't necessarily feel like it's God's voice, but just the thought has kept going round in my head. Say it. <laughs> just tell us. Just tell us. Don't, you know, don't hold it in. We'd love to hear. It, it could be that that's just what we need to hear. So, so five, ten minutes now. Just keep your eyes closed. You might want to look out the window. Just sit comfortably. Take a deep breath. Breathe slowly um, and just listen to God. Thank you.
1 Kings 19. The Lord said to Elijah, go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord. For the Lord is about to pass by. And a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, there was an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and he went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. A gentle whisper. God in a gentle whisper. I hope you may have found that time helpful. If anyone has anything they would like to share, there is. Yeah, I had a really clear. Um, basically, I've had like work's quite uncertain at the moment. I've had some. Um, it's just not a very good place to be, and I'm struggling with a few things. And you know, I've been really wondering if I need to look elsewhere. It's scary because I've been there for 26 years, um, and it's you know the only job I've ever known. But I had a really clear. You're where I want you to be. You're where I want you to be. So, um, wow. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to try and stick it out and um, yeah. look for the positives. And I also yeah. had a really clear, sorry, come back to me. Yeah. And I have lost my way a bit. And I had a really clear come back to me. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Joe, can I, can I, can I just encourage you because that passage i've read, just read from one kings goes on to say what are you doing here elijah okay and he explains why he's doing that what he's doing there and the lord says to him go back the way you came go back where you came and go to the desert of damascus all right he says, go back from where you came from. Go back to what you know. Perhaps that's what he's saying, to you. like from what you're saying, that's what he's saying. Yeah, we'll be, perhaps we can be praying for you, Joe. Yeah. Actually, I don't- I appreciate you for sharing that. Sorry, yeah. I'd just like to share something to encourage you, Joe, also. In this pandemic, I have struggled tremendously spiritually and in other ways and yes it's a bit of a battle and you feel isolated you can feel a bit of a bit alone but as i was reading this verse the sun is the Im Im the image of the invisible god it just reminded me that jesus is a reflection of god's amazing love and uh and i was saying well in my head and the heart well yes yes okay He's the, he's the image of the invisible God. But you're more than that. Jesus is more than that. He is also, his love is an amazing steadfast love. He's immovable. You say, I, you can depend upon me. I am reliable. I am reliable. So he'll hold fast all of us because he loves us. We belong to him. And when we feel isolated and a bit alone, so that's all right, because I belong to Jesus and he will lead us forward. He'll lead you forward as he has in the past and he's done wonderful things. Hold fast to what they know to be true. And he will draw you close. That's you. Because I'm going to hold fast to it.
Would anybody else like to share anything? Perhaps we just, perhaps we will just, let, let's bring this time together for reflection with a prayer, if we may. That's all right. Father God, I thank you for this time where we have spent looking at your word, your word that is living and active, life-giving, and we thank you for your son Jesus. We thank you that in him we can find everything we need and that we can be made whole. Father, we thank you for this time of, of space to listen to you. I thank you for the ways in which you may have spoken. We want to, I just want to pray particularly for Jo and, and, and she has made herself vulnerable this morning to share with us what she has heard from you this, in this time. And we pray for her that you will hold her tight. I thank you that you have given her a sense of affirmation as to where she should be. Because you have a plan for her, a plan that is positive, that is good and that is it's about you placing her in this world for your for your kingdom, her to do. So I pray that you will hold, continue to hold her tight and keep her close to you. Help us to keep listening to you, Lord, seeking seeking your voice. The voice that may sometimes come in the whisper, but very much there. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We will pray. No, we won't pray. We'll, we'll sing together now our final, um, our final song. If we may please, Matt. Um, bear with me. I think. Yeah, Christ is enough. Christ, Christ is enough. Thank you. <laughs> Christ is my reward and all the mighty 
just want to say thank you to everyone who has um, taken part in the service or shared um, this morning and just want to send us out with this um, Sabbath blessing. May this day bring Sabbath rest to my heart and my home. May God's image in me be restored and my, nation, my imagination in God be restoried. May the gravity of material things be lightened and the relativity of time slow down. May I know grace to embrace my own finite smallness in the arms of God's infinite greatness. May God's word feed me and his spirit lead me into the week and in the life to come. Amen. 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 Our service is ended. Thank you.